little tiger seasoning on your bacon. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Outpost Review. Edition one, summer break. Here we will cut a new grate for the outdoor kitchen step. Well, we're making um, BLTs. I might even talk them into a belt, bacon, egg, lettuce, and tomato. But anyway, while those are cooking, it's time for another giveaway. What we've decided to do this month is let you all decide and by that I mean we're going to give away a $50 um, Amazon gift card on our Outpost channel and we're going to give away a $25 gift card on our review channel so you guys be sure and make a comment on this video and then find the one on the review channel which comes out on Wednesdays make a comment there and that will put you in the drawing for the winner for the gift cards that way, we don't have to think of what we're going to give away this month. We're just going to let you all decide. Yes, it's right? on you this time. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Since it's on you, all you have to do is say, Hey, I want the gesture to have it, and I will gladly take it. The comment that they need to make in there is, Hey, what are we doing? Yep. Hey, what are we doing? <laughs> I'm just teasing. Make any kind of comment because the random picture actually pulls all the comments from that particular video and then that's how it does it but um, anyway that is for the month of June so shortly I'll meet you inside and we'll see who the lucky winners were for the month of May so stay tuned me Hi. okay I have got both channels pulled up here this is actually the outpost review channel what I'm going to do is copy that URL slide over here to the random picker we're going to insert that in there. Then we're going to come down and answer this little question, which is nine. And we're going to get all the comments. Okay, then we're going to come down here and start the raffle. So, Daniel Courtney, looks like you are the winner for the review channel. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll come up here, we will go to the Outpost channel. Whoops. We will copy that link, go back to the random picker, highlight that, delete it, paste in the new one, answer the little question, and get the comments. All right, then we'll go over here and start the raffle. So it looks like Misplaced Country Girl, you are the winner for the Outpost channel. <clears throat> well, congratulations to Danielle Courtney and Misplaced Country Girl for winning the month of May at Smoky Mountain Outpost. We hope that you enjoy the gifts. Uh, be sure and contact us at SmokyMountainOutpost at gmail.com. Uh, with the information on how we can get in touch with you so that we can get that stuff ordered and get it sent out to you as soon as possible. So with that said, let's get back to the video. Well, hey guys, this is my sister, Susie. You all know the jester over here, Jennifer. What, what up? You're not mixing mayonnaise and mustard, are you? I am. You feeling okay? Yeah. Anyway, um, we've made us some eggs to go with our BLT so they've actually become what you call belts. Anyway, I'm going to start with an egg. Get whichever egg you want. No, go ahead. I'll take the right places to me. Lay the egg on there. Get me a couple of pieces of this fresh lettuce that we just went and got. Lay that on top. Yum, yum. Then In the tongue. We'll put a little bit of this mustard on there, too. Yeah. 
Some people like mayo. I like the mustard. I'll give thanks before we eat. Hmm? Said I don't know about it. I don't even know if you'll be able to get your mouth around that. Tell me what it tastes like. No, it tastes good, doesn't it? What'd you say? Alright guys, we'll eat this up and we'll be right back with you. Mmm boy. Well, I just took the tag off of this because it's not for resale. Um, these are basically to use up here on the homestead. I like the old hand tools because, you know, if something ever happened and we didn't have power, um, if you have the skill to use these old hand tools, uh, they can really come in handy. You can still get the same job done. Um, you know, uh, my son said that I needed, I was getting so many of these, I needed to start a collection. Well, the reason that I have so many is because they come in different sizes. And depending on what size hole that you need, um, depends on the size auger that you use. Anyway, um, Jennifer was telling me that her grandpa used to go to the same place, DJ's Antiques, um, when he was still alive. And because she's been around there she said she built it in 88 so that's 34 years right she's been in business there for 34 years so this is one of the uh, tools that I picked up there and I'll go show you uh, the others this is another one that I picked up um, is, this, is this a two inch probably this one's like either a one or a three quarter looks more than three quarter you can almost use this to core a pineapple, like literally. Um, they need to be sharpened on the tip somewhat, but they still work. I don't think I'm really gonna have to do a whole lot to this one uh, in order to get it uh, usable. But, you know, we've got uh, the tools to be able to make new handles if we need to. So I still need to oil that one up. But yeah, these are gonna come in really handy up here because I like using these old tools. So let me grab that saw that I had found over there and I'll show you what I plan on doing with it. It's magic, my head appeared. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually um, a single or, or one person saw but it can be used for two people. It's missing the handle on the end so I'm going to make a handle to go on this end but also um, they had a vertical handle on these a lot that way if two people wanted to they could get on the other end and they could saw okay um, but this was primarily used and you know what these teeth are almost all still in really good shape as far as being set but I'm sure that they need to be sharpened um, which is something that we will do but uh, they uh, would use this for bucking up firewood and things like that. They would have a, a bench, you know, that would actually have stobs on it that would hold the firewood. And then they would buck up firewood uh, for the fireplace with these. Um, but yeah, these are really cool. This is just a, a shorter version of the big long crosscut saw. Um, that one person could actually use. Now we also had a subscriber send me, I think it was a year, year and a half ago possibly, a splitting axe and this thing right here probably weighs it's heavy. eight or ten pounds maybe. Um, not quite sure but uh, let me show you this. It's made by BBB which I think was in, um, can you read that? No, I already tried. I think they went out of business in the 60s. Something for, it looks like Bingham, Bing. Bingham's Better 
something. Best brand, maybe? Yeah. There's the Bingham's, EST. Bingham's best brand. Yeah, that's what it was. Is this Elwood? E L E W O O D. Elwood, maybe. Um, but I need to make a handle and put in that, which I'm going to do. And then we will sharpen that up and we will hang it up here so that it can be used here at the homestead. But yeah, this is a pretty heavy piece of material right there, so you wouldn't have to swing real hard for that to be able to... No, and I sure wouldn't want to be in its way, honey. Split something, yeah. You want to hold your legs apart, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> you know, the other thing, too, is um, I use this to, Looks like a machete. to split that piece of oak. Um, this is called a fro, by the way. if you've never seen one of these, but they used to use these a um, hundred years ago, I guess you could say, um, and probably a lot of people still use them today, but they're really good for splitting things. Um, mainly hardwoods um, that they use that because the hardwoods they used, you know, not only did they last longer, but they could like cut a, a log this, like a, the size that would go in your fireplace basically and get that split and then they would just start cutting out pieces of, of a, like a pie uh, and that's how they made shingles and um, they could you know split wood to, like I did the other day to make a, a square piece to make handles out of or it, basically anything they wanted to do but it's called a fro and uh, it really comes in handy for a lot of different things you know I hate to say this because it's a neat little gadget and they always say don't fix something that's not broken. But I think this would look really good with a piece of wood that he uh, whittles out and puts in it instead of the one that's in it right She's now. She's talking about a crooked piece because I do everything crooked. Well, you know, somebody wanted to know. This ain't the straightest, but you know. Somebody wanted to know why didn't I... Um, mount the posts on the tower, why didn't I go straight up with them? Well, it, it stands to reason that um, anything that was built like this is going to be much stronger at the base and less likely to turn over because it has to pass the tipping point. So if it's pushed in this direction, it's pushing down into the ground. Same way in the opposite direction. That's why all four of those are leaned in towards each other. Uh, it just makes it to have a much stronger base and less likely to tip over. I still need to put cross bracing on it and um, get that ladder that I've been working on, get it mounted up there and get some all thread put through there so that it's tied into the bracing so that it doesn't ever move. But uh, once that tower is built, you know, even having it cemented into the ground is going to help out a great deal. So once that tower is built, I think it's going to be pretty solid. It may be more solid than the cabin. The cabin may blow away before the tower does. <laughs> Back, I think it was up to 50 years ago, um, they actually had these towers built in these mountains and people would hike up there and spend several days, take food and everything, and that was fire, they called, their, their fire towers actually, where they would sit and they would watch. They could see for miles and miles. There's actually one not too far from us uh, but it's got a fire tower that you, you walk up this mountain until you go out and then there's a bunch of rocks on the very edge of a cliff that goes way down. The fire tower is actually built inside of those rocks so that it gave it a good foundation. Uh, but it still exists there. There's a little chain across it. You can actually go past that chain and climb up into the fire tower. But they used to man that fire tower up to I think about 50 years ago when they, was the last time that they used it. Um, but they could actually, like I said, see for miles, probably 30 miles in any direction they could see. And if they seen smoke, you know, then they would get on the radio and call out. At DJ's as well. The only thing is I don't have this one sharpened yet, but it was working. I actually was able to re remove some bark when I had some help up here one day. We actually had my other draw knife. That worked a lot better. Yeah, that worked a lot better, yeah. But this one right here still works. So once it's sharpened up, it will be a very valuable tool. Now the other thing that I have picked up was this handsaw.
and this one right here I actually picked up over at DJ's as well and this one really works good so when I seen this one um, I haven't tried it yet but I can tell these teeth are very sharp and this will be a really valuable asset the handle needs to be tightened up on it a little bit and my son is going to order me a wire wheel that I can actually use uh, to clean these blades up and get a lot of the rust off and then um, wipe them down with oil so that I can hopefully preserve you know where they don't get um, any rust back on but I'll tell you what this what did I pay for this seven seven dollars and I think she only charged me five because whatever is marked on the tag is not what you pay so I tell you what you cannot go and buy a nice quality handsaw like this for seven bucks anywhere except that, DJ's it's fancy too look at that yeah that work on that it's thing. got some <laughs> they got a little burnt in uh, uh, engraving right there but yeah you know and I paid seven dollars for that one right there and these things work super so that's where that's why I keep going by there um, to see if they've got any new hand tool or any used uh, that they haven't had hand tools there because if I can pick them up I'm going to because I'll tell you like I said this is how to save money um, and get the tool that you need to be able to do the job this old stuff makes the, the cabin look better um, so I have a joke imagine that right um so how do crazy people get through the forest they take the psychopath! Yeah. They do. They take the psychopath. Uh, uh, even, we woke Smokey he, up. Yeah, he thought that was funny, didn't you? Yeah. Are you the Momo dog? Huh? You're the best boys. Yeah. So, um, something else I have to talk about is the fact that my dad's garden is growing. Mm. And I'm so jealous. Normally, I have the tomato plants to be jealous of, but his tomato plants have like a base stalk of like his arm. Like they are huge and hardy. And I literally counted earlier, there are 31 tomatoes that are already, they've already bloomed, came out, that are the size of a nickel and greater. So that's not considering all the other blooms. That's just 31 tomatoes already on the vine. I told you last week, it may be a month and we'll be picking some tomatoes. Yes, yes. My lettuce, um, the lettuce is probably this big around, growing all over the side. The the uh, pepper plants are probably up, I don't know, maybe 14 inches high already. I've already picked some cayenne pepper, got them in there His in the kitchen. Cabbage plants could literally, you, we could be like the cabbage uh, patch kids cabbage plant for their baby dolls yeah because they're, they're so probably big. 30 so 30 inches in diameter those plants up there uh, got some onions that no kidding they're probably this tall you've got blooms on your cucumbers right and and I think after this last week's rain probably runners were 14 16 inches long on those cucumbers that I had to actually wind up the vine because they're just like hanging there like aliens you know um, I think it's that wood ash that, you know, of course, last year I had the tomatoes down on the bottom. And I got what, what do they call that fungus? Black rot? Uh, I can't even think right Anyway, now. it started eating the tomatoes. Blossom end rot. Yeah. Blossom end started rot. eating the uh, tomato plants. So I decided to move them. And they are happy where I moved them. And that bed up there is where I had put a lot of the wood ash. Uh, from the fireplace you know over the winter and I know that a lot of plants like a more lower pH level uh, more acid basically and the tomatoes are in one of the beds that got more of the ash so they seem to be doing really really well they are happy 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 my cauliflower and my broccoli are so tall they actually are falling over and of course we had a lot of wind but um, I'm going to have to take some of that small cane up there 
and actually put beside each one of them uh, so that they don't just basically fall over and break their stalk or pull the roots up. Um, Potatoes but, are looking good as well. But the rain, you know, it kind of puts a damper on me doing anything else, but I'll tell you what, the garden has loved the rain, so we're not going to complain because of the price of food today. Um, you know, we're going to be glad that we had planted all of this. So, um, <laughs> Smokey's really glad he's getting I'm, all kinds of petting right now. I'm, I'm rubbing underneath of his neck right now. He got that head held back there because that feels good, don't it, buddy? Huh? Yeah, that feels good. Have you told everyone how he goes and gets a biscuit? I actually put the box of dog biscuits um, in there in the bathroom where the bathroom is going to be and uh, so when I let them in the house now they have been staying outside uh, quite a bit since the weather's gotten warmer um, and I don't have to clean as much hair because um, yesterday they'd only been in the house because we had a lot of rain right they'd only been in the house like a week how much hair did we clean up like a ton like two or three dust pans full so I don't like cleaning up the hair so I move their beds out here this is where they're sleeping and uh, they bark quite a bit because I think I've had a little possum hanging around the pig pen up there uh, trying to eat out of some of the buckets um, but they'll take off and they'll go run whatever's off away and uh, so, you know, that's the reason that you have dogs, right? To kind of protect the area where you're at. And, you know, we don't want any wild hogs uh, hanging around up here, getting the one we got stirred up up there, or the chickens. Now, they're doing a whole lot better since we caged them back up. Um, because, and I think that I mentioned this to you, the day that, um, what was I doing? I think I was working on the tower. Um, but that red tail hawk was just at the top of the trees up there circling, okay, making it sound, you know, psh, psh, how they sound. Um, I guess it's waiting on me to open up the chicken pen, but uh, that didn't happen. So the chickens are doing much better caged up. That's the way that they're going to have to stay. So I was telling Jennifer that probably what I'm going to do is get some more wire um, when, you know, things settle down or I get some more help and try to extend the cage a little bit because she's got baby chicks and I baby do. ducks I have, at home. I have nine baby chickens and eight little ducklings um, who I never knew could make such a mess and who could drink so much water. But anyway, Landon is raising them. They are cute as they can be, peeping and quacking. And um, they're a week old right now so they'll be at my house for a little while longer obviously but we have to make the chicken coop a little bigger but to get back to what dad was talking about he has taught Smokey he actually leaves the box of biscuits on the floor and I'll let him tell the rest of the story so um, I generally give him treats several times a day so I'll tell him to go in there and get his own biscuit and he'll go in there and he'll look and he'll just stand there by the box and I'll say, go ahead and get you a biscuit. And then he'll reach in there and he'll grab one. He'll go eat it. And of course, Dolly, she won't. I have to go in there and hand her hers. But then the next thing I know, he's slipping in there to get him another one. It's like I've gave him the uh, go ahead, you know, to eat the whole box. And usually I'll let him get two or three and then I tell him, all right, that's enough. And he'll go lay down. But he doesn't offer to go in there after that and take any unless I tell him to go in there and get himself a biscuit so he's so cute yeah. he's a good boy yeah he's the best boys okay we thought we'd do a little question and answer um, somebody commented and said good evening Richard hope you had a good one my friend you have a green thumb um, this year it appears like I have a green hand but I don't think that was it. I think just watering them every day um, in the evening, you know, you don't want to do it midday, um, but in the evening as the sun's going down is generally when I would water. I think that's been the, the ticket. And then some of the wood ash that I use, especially on the plants that like the lower pH. Um, also, they're talking about, um, I said, be sure and go check out Out of the Woods on YouTube. Uh, great 
guy that I have met, um, been following him. I said the last time about a year and a half. I think it's been longer than that because I remember watching him way back before I even started on the cabin. So the cabin's been done since about a year and a half now on the outside because it was last January when I started on it, wasn't it? So it was before that. So I've probably been following him for two, two and a half years now. Um, where he actually did board and batten on a building that he was doing. And I thought, you know, I may just do that. And I ended up basically using that idea on this cabin right here. But uh, Nathan, um, really great guy. Be sure and go check out Out of the Woods if you haven't. Um, he has a lot of knowledge about logs and sawmills and stuff like that. And been getting a lot of comments that, yeah, they watch him too. So... Um, if you're new to this channel or if you've never went and checked it out before, take my advice. Go check it out because I think that it's something that you will enjoy. I think that you'll learn a lot. He's got a farm too, does some traveling around and, and stuff, which we kind of thought that we might do a little bit more of that on our channel. Like when I went to the um, antique shop, you know, there's some moonshine distilleries around here now and some different things. So leave us some comments. If you guys would like to see me do a little bit more traveling around, the area and showing you some of what is available uh, here to us. Leave me some comments and let me know. Uh, and then somebody says you must really like peppers. We do because we make a lot of salsa and cooking with the peppers. I'll tell you what, I was telling my sister the other day that all the time that I grew up I never knew that there was a different type of a bell pepper. You know, I thought they were all green. I never paid any attention to it when I went to the grocery store. That's all my family had bought was the green. They must have liked it, but I never did like them. But They're I, disgusting. I think it's when the guy, uh, one of my friends came up here for, uh, that was my former EMS instructor and cooked that deer steak, that back, uh, uh, back, strap. back strap, and he used some of the red and the yellow and I thought man that is so good and that's when I started cooking with him and I just can't hardly get by without them now I cook I cut up some of the yellow cut up some of the red and I will put some onions in there and saute that and especially with the um, uh, Brussels sprouts too man I, and even my son came up here last year and I cooked some for him um, I can't remember I think it was during the summertime when we were cooking out up there and he said, man, this is really good. And, of course, you know, I always pawn everything off to the, to the wood smoke. But I think that the wood smoke does add to the flavor of the food that you're cooking. But, um, yeah, I, I tell you what, I'm, I'm a big fan of that stuff now. And he knows that I'm not, so no worries on that one. Ugh. That no. what? Green bell peppers, yellow, yeah. red, no. The and yellow and the red, I'm telling you, they're good when they're, when they're cooked. Let's see... Somebody actually wrote in here says your garden is beautiful such a great inspiration to me as I'm just starting garden season where I live I can see you put a lot of work and love into your growing. I also have a backyard garden It's the start of my three year now But there's still so much to learn and I appreciate your tips and tricks and things like that. I don't really have any um, I was always fairly good at growing but this year has is been totally different and I don't know if it was the like I said the soil preparation that I did or just because I watered them every night I mean even if it was supposed to rain the next day I watered them that night and of course the next day came and if it did rain then I didn't have to water them but they have been getting water every day I think that has been the big key when I was in nursing school uh, working at the children's home the same thing happened there we watered every evening and um, the kids were so proud of what they had grown and people from the administration building and some of the other house parents they would come by and we would give them bags of peppers and tomatoes and uh, some of the other stuff that we were growing and you know um, I think that was the key too. there was watering them every night so if you've don't do that try that um, because you may end up with the same result somebody said you may watch you have to watch planting sweet peppers and hot too close they sometimes cross pollinate and you get spicy bell peppers that would be just fine wouldn't it 
for him. <laughs> Again, yeah. no bell peppers yeah. for me. I would, I would love the spicy bell peppers. That, that's not a problem. Okay. There's so much to do up here. I'll tell you what. Um, I never thought when I moved up here that I would be doing so much. But it just seems like, you know, every time you turn around, you think of something else that you need that you're going to have to... Uh, do or work on in order to be self-sufficient. So can you imagine people that lived back 100, 150, 200 years ago, the, um, the, the size of the farms and the different things that they had to do in order to be self-sufficient. So there's always a lot of work on a homestead if you're going to be self-sufficient. There's always a lot of work that goes along with that. But I'll tell you what, it sure is fun because I was thinking the other day, you know, the Lord blessed me a whole lot. I told God, I said, you know, it's really nice to be out, to, to sit out here where it's peaceful. I come out here in the afternoon when I'm done, just before I go in to start editing videos and sit out here with the dogs and pet them a little bit. And just, you know, being out here, um, you don't hear pretty much anything, a plane every once in a while or a car that's got a broken muffler going down the road way down there or your neighbor's dog possibly barking off in the distance somewhere, but mainly you hear, uh, you know, the birds singing and stuff like that. You don't even care about shaving anymore. I mean, just go, go look at that. I'm, just, I'm like that, that Marlboro man or that, uh, the, the backwoods guy. Remember that cigar? Uh, that's what I feel like sometimes. I'm going to have to take a day out and shave here. But... Uh, Anyway, guys, we're going to go ahead and cut the video here. We appreciate it. Glad that you all like that tower build. Uh, it won't be long, and, and that will be done. We'll be able to mount the satellite up there so that we can have some communication and be able to upload videos. Anyway, uh, thanks for stopping by and hanging out with us. Jennifer, myself, my son, Patrick, we appreciate you very much uh, with all the support that you give us on both of our channels. Um, we hope that each and every one of you have a great day. You don't have any more jokes left, right? That Nine. You say. Okay. You're lucky. Okay. Y'all heard it. Y'all are lucky. Yeah, y'all heard it. So anyway, have a great day. We look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time. Bye. Bye.